recently posted a review of the Mongoose Ripsaw, and apparently the bike generates lots of attention because there were quite a few calls for me to make the Ripsaw a project bike. After all, as someone pointed out, Project Ripsaw, it just sounds cool. So I looked into it, and I decided that as far as projects go, maybe a stage zero was about as much as I was willing to invest in the Ripsaw. So that's not much. Now I'm not panning the bike because I really like it for what it is, or at least what it is for me, but in my review you saw that I didn't feel like it was a good mountain bike. That doesn't mean I can't make it slightly better, and on the cheap. In my review I complained about those mongoose grips and how they turned into palm torture devices on the trail. Maybe I can help with that. I think these ESI silicone grips may do the job. They're made in USA, and they're very thick, even for foam silicone grips. I selected these because they're super chunky and I hope super chunky equates to less abuse on my hands. One good thing about those factory grips is that they may be shy on padding, but they're super pliable and that makes them easy to remove. I think I could have worked these off without any assistance. Installed, the ESI silicone foamies are indeed super chunky. Lots of foam to squish around, so I have high hopes that these are going to make a difference. At the very least, they look good. I also decided to forego the PSI ratings and lose some of the air for what I hope is going to be some extra cush from the plus size tires. And my starting point's going to be 22 PSI. And I'm happy to report that the foam grips, in conjunction with the lowered PSI, do make a difference. It's ever so slightly better, even on the same areas that rattled me to bits on the last ride. Now I don't want to over pitch the gains because they are minimal. And this is still a very rough ride, even on the smoother sections, but it is slightly better. I don't know how much of this is coming across on the video, but it's still bumpy and I think you can see that even with my gimbal, it's a bit shaky. So though I can feel that it's not as bad, not as bad is still really not good. I mean, yes, the traction is better, but that was already good, and even though I'm not rattling quite as much, after a little bit of riding, my palms were still starting to hurt. I tried multiple PSI changes, trying to make things even smoother, and I was able to go as low as 15, but right at 15, it started getting a little wonky feeling. Another thing is two solid weeks of e-biking is starting to have effects on my already questionable endurance, but it's worth it. Even with the lowered PSI and the chunky grips, I'm still painfully aware that I'm on the same bike. And the grips did buy a little bit of time, but really not as much as I would have hoped for. But I do like the feel of them, and for the under $20 that they cost, link in the description, I think these would be perfect on any of my other bikes, plus the aqua blue perfectly matches the bike's graphics. I'm also a bit disappointed that the lowered PSI didn't have more of an impact. I mean, it too is definitely better, but not better enough. And on these tires, there's a very fine line between lowered pressure and too low. Well said in general is kind of disappointing. It has 110 millimeter spacing and those fat bike looking rims, you know, they are wide, but they're single wall. I figured they were and they are. Now the width will give some strength, but when you pair that with those flimsy tan sidewalls, a picture starts to emerge that may explain the 30 PSI minimum rating. And speaking of those tires, these are Chow Yang, not Chang Yang, like I said in the video. I'm not sure how I got that twisted, but Chow Yang. Now don't take all this as me being negative on the bike, because for what it is, I like it. There are some impressive components, especially considering the price. I like the entire drivetrain, and being that it's a street rider only for me, really other than the grips, the only thing I could really see changing would be maybe better pedals. So in summary, no Project Ripsaw, but if you really like the name, I guess we could use it and call this Project Ripsaw Stage Zero and just leave it at that. So that's more detail on this bike, and I hope it answered some of the questions and some of the feedback I received from the first video. Now, I previously asked for subscriber big box bike pictures. I wanted to see your bikes, and I had no idea how big this was going to get. I planned on doing a standalone video talking a little bit about each bike, but after almost a thousand pictures received from both my blog, chat, and email, that's just not going to be possible. So I'm having to go about this a different way. I'm going to start adding a few pics of subscriber bikes to the end of select videos. So if you see your bike, comment below and let everyone know that it's yours and share any details you want about it. Let me tell you, not only am I impressed with the amount of pictures I've received, but also I'm super impressed with some of the bikes I've seen and also a bit jealous. So keep the pictures coming and maybe I can get to yours. And for now, sit back, check out these bikes and enjoy. Thanks for watching, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks to everyone that submitted their bike pictures thus far, and have a great day.